The Straight Red Card is sponsored by Roughneck Scarves. Visit Roughneck Scarves for your supporters' gear from Seattle, Portland, New York, to the Philadelphia Union, and anything MLS to the English Premier League. Visit Roughneck Scarves at roughneckscarves.com. Adieu, uh, Freddie Adieu. Um, in, in your recent article, you mentioned, uh, and I'm going to quote it here, this summer, Bedoya is likely to attract interest from teams in higher leagues, while next year, uh, Adu will likely still be in the second division of Turkey. The decision to go with Adu over Bedoya is a gamble by Bradley. I guess my question is, it, was it really a gamble by Bradley, or is this kind of maybe just kind of stroking Freddie a little and saying, you know, we're still looking at you, we're still paying attention? I, I mean, I don't think you really want to do that in a tournament. Um, stroking, I mean, unless you, unless the guy's like an absolute can't miss prospect, like you know, like what England did with Theo Walcott the one time when he was seventeen, you know, years old, and what they did, what Brazil did in '94 with Ronaldo when he was sixteen years old. You know, when you're dealing with like you know prospects at that level, you can kind of string them along. But when you're dealing with some guy who's like you know on his fifth club since 2007. Uh, you know, I, I, I would not have brought that. Uh, you know, I don't think it's... I mean, whereas Bedoya, you know, he's never really played in his natural position for the best national team in the mm-hmm. central part of the midfield. He's, but they've been moving out wide and he struggled there. But, you know, you put him in... You know, both Bedoya and Adu play that him. You know, they move forward well in the, in the middle part of the field. You know, and with Fieldhaber looking like he's going to be out right now, I don't know what the official, di- the official diagnosis is, in, but I don't have my hopes up for him. Um, you know, you, you're going to want that, and you know, and, and you're going to, and that's an important thing. If you're down, you need a goal, you need, or if you're tied late, because it's like, want, like Guadalupe is bunkering, you're going to want someone at that level. And you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, a do the Turkish second level, you know, second division is just. I mean, you know, he's he's only twenty, he, he's twenty one, but you know, he seems like he still has a lot more to prove. And Bedoya, on the other hand, in the recent last four weeks playing the best soccer in his career. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I mean, he's getting goals and assists left and right. I, you know, he's, he's gone in the, I, I think he's gone in the summer transfer window. And I think he's going to go to, like, you know, worst case scenario, like the Eric of NBA. He can get around their weird work rules or France, you know, same thing. But, you know, and he did well on his trial with Birmingham City, you know, when he went to the chain there. You know, it's, I, I would have brought him. Yeah, you know, I, I don't understand what you're going to gain with a do. I think the best thing you can tell a do is, you know, get focused, do what you can to get on a higher level. Then we'll look at you. Don't close the door, but I don't think he needs to have anything strung along. I mean, his, yeah. you know, he's had so much handed to him his whole career. I think that was kind of what hurt him in the first place. Right. Yeah, I I agree with Brian that if if we're going to stroke a do's uh, ego, then I think we need to uh, do that during a friendly, not necessarily the goal. I mean, if, if there's one person that whose whose ego has proven not to be stroked. Freddie too, like on sixty minutes. I mean, he had that sixty minutes special when he was like twelve. I mean, you know, it's like you know, and, and he played in MLS at fourteen, where and media access has been nuts on him ever since. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that's one thing you don't need. It's time to take a whole other yeah. approach. I mean, I don't think that's why Bob Bradley brought him along. I think Bob thinks he could be an offensive spark down the bench, but I just don't think you can you can you leave off someone like he's playing as well as the Doya. Yeah, it seems like that's kind of a, a Bedoya got cut, cut, you know, at the knees or something there. But you've been at some of the Gold Cup practices so far, and uh, what are you seeing out there, Brian? I mean, you know, it's tough. I mean, the first practice was I was at. Uh, I wasn't there today. I was at Friday, Saturday, and then I'm going to go back the next few days. Um, uh, the first day was just kind of jogging around. Not everyone has been there, so it's been, they didn't have enough people to do any kind of scrimmages. I mean, the team looks happy. They're really happy to be there. Um, you know, I mean, I was talking to Eric Lee High a little bit. He's looking forward to maybe showing you can play on the left. I talked to um, Tim Howard. He's totally geared up for it. Um, talked to Robbie Rogers. He wasn't there. I talked to him over the phone. Um, you know, he's, he's totally geared up for it, too. Um, you know, it's going to be good. Uh, too, too early to tell, though, from the practice. Yeah. Um, now, what about, I mean, obviously they're all preparing for the U.S. For, versus Spain friendly first. Um, yeah, the mind is, that's all in preparation for the 
Gold Cup. I mean, it, it's these big time profile games like U.S. Argentina, U.S. Brazil. They're fun to think about, but they're just friendly. Yeah, I was going to ask you because it doesn't seem like the United States team is really playing a whole lot of softies these days. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, maybe it's it's just the last couple of years or last year or so, but we've seen a lot of Brazil, Argentina, Spain. Uh, yeah. You know, are we a glutton for punishment? Or does this really, as the old adage says, when you play people, when you play the best, it only makes you better? The U.S. is playing among the best. Has one among, they're, they're about the most aggressive as any team in the world about trying to make this tough schedule. You have to realize that, like, people make a big deal about World Cup qualifying out of Europe and European qualifying. Those qualifiers are, are, are not too unlike CONCACAF, where you have a couple strong teams, and at most of the games in European World Cup qualifying are terrible. They're like mm-hmm. Germany versus, like, San Marino and right. Moldova. <laughs> and you, don't, you don't get to see, like, you don't get to see the top matched up. Um, so, the highlight, you know, and if you're lucky enough, you make the finals, and then there's three games in your group play. I mean, the U.S. is trying to consistently make this the norm of who they go against. And no other team is putting together, you know, top level competition like the U.S. is right now. And it's really rewarding. Now, their FIFA ranking will suffer because they're going to lose more games than if they played, you know, Honduras or Guatemala in friendly, you know, right. I think like, you know, but. Their, their ranking will suffer. You know, they're going to enter in the up underdog in a lot of places. Um, but I can live with that. I think most U.S. fans should live with that. It's you know, you're only going to get better. And, you know, every now and then you're going to want to have to play a minnow because you're going to want to have to learn how to break down a bunker. You know, you are going to want to have to learn how to do those things. Right. You are going to have to face those things. Even in the World Cup, when we go up late, you know, you, you, had, you had you know, Slovenia was bunkering the last couple of days. Algeria was bunkering, so you're going to need to. Concacaf and weak friendlies do play their role, but like generally, you only get better by playing the best. Yeah, I, but they're doing great. I agree, but can you imagine now after playing Spain, uh, going up against the likes of uh, Canada, Panama, and Guadalupe? Uh, you have any predictions on those? Uh, you know, of course, I think the U.S. is going to win. I mean, all three, but you never know. I mean, one team could bunker, and then the U.S. could hit the post five times, and then zero zero. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it, it's tough. I mean, the U.S. enters in as favorites. You know, hey, if you want to talk about, like, dual nationals, I mean, Canada is the one, I mean, you know, they, they couldn't <laughs> get a Junior Oilet uh, released. So, I mean, he's yeah. uncommitted, and I don't even really know what his options are with England. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's it's really tough for them. But, uh, you know, Canada's going to be interesting. I mean, their fan base is, this is, I would be worried about Canada a little bit, only so much as that, if you go to any, talk to any Canadian fan, read the papers and you read the message boards, they are jazzed. With this game. Mm. They are really, really jazzed. Like, for, it's like kind of like how the U.S. used to play Mexico back in the 90s when yeah. the rivalry hadn't really come to where it is right now. And right. we, Every time the U.S. and Mexico would play, and the U.S. fans would be totally jazzed up, and Mexico didn't really understand what the big deal was because they'd been beating on us for 40 years. <laughs> Canada, Canada's really, really jazzed with this and their players are really, really good. They're going to play with a chip on their shoulder. Hmm. They're going to bring a lot of fans to Detroit, so the U.S. has to be careful with that game. Yeah. They really do. Now, as far as, you know, really, I mean, if we look at the draw on the group stage. looks good for us. But after that, doesn't it really depend on when we run into Mexico in the elimination round, right? I mean, no one else should be able to beat us. Um in this tournament, I mean, there, there are other yeah. teams with there's, there's potential there. We can always have a bad game, but really, only Mexico stands in our way for this thing, right? Uh, that's the conventional wisdom. I mean, but the thing is, the U.S. to Mexico, you know, you have to you have to assume that both teams are going to not screw up. Um, I mean, and that's you know, you have quarters and the semis, you know, um, for two teams. So that four games all have to go your way. Um, you know. 75 percent chance you know it's seven, you know it, there's always one to screw up i mean it's, it's it's it'll take a lot i mean look i mean i i was you see this in, in like the youth qualifying structure where like where one result can screw up everything that happens i mean especially if, i mean especially when when the u.s and mexico are such favorites one team's gonna bunker if, if neither team's gonna answer those bunkers and play to a zero zero draw you go to shootout then anything can happen so we'll see yeah 